Hi, my name is Scott Douglas, and welcome to the virtual commemoration of the defense of Fort Dobbs. Fort Dobbs was garrisoned by a, a company of provincial soldiers, full-time troops serving the province of North Carolina during the French and Indian War. When conflict broke out with the Cherokee in 1759 to 61, this area where uh, Fort Dobbs is situated, modern-day Statesville in Iredell County, became the center of a war zone as Cherokee war parties went east from the mountains attacking British colonists in retribution for the death of their leaders and loved ones at British hands earlier. Fort Dobbs itself was surrounded by a party of as many as 70 Cherokee warriors around 9 o'clock at night on February 27, 1760. There were 31 soldiers in the garrison at the time. An unknown number of civilians were also sheltering in the building. The battle, which was very confusing and disorienting for both sides, happening in the middle of darkness, actually began when a party of soldiers left the fort and went hundreds of yards down the hillside to my left to engage a party of Cherokee. They were fired on by the Cherokee, who immediately rushed the soldiers, as their commander, Colonel Hugh Waddell, noted, as if to tomahawk us or take us prisoners. When the Cherokee were only 12 steps from the party of troops, the soldiers returned fire literally into the Cherokees' faces. Every musket that the men carried was loaded not only with a standard musket ball, but also seven small buckshot, creating a deadly hail of lead going downrange towards their Cherokee foes. The battle uh, came up to the fort itself with the soldiers all inside the building you see behind me, firing out of loopholes at Cherokee warriors out in the darkness. All in all, it was a very quick, confusing, but bloody affair as two soldiers were wounded, a civilian boy was killed, and as many as a dozen Cherokee warriors also became casualties on this ground. The weapons the soldiers were using to defend Fort Dobbs were government-issued military muskets. When the French and Indian War had begun, North Carolina had no supplies of military arms. So Governor Dobbs had a thousand stand of arms, or sets of weaponry, sent across the ocean from the Tower of London. Every soldier received a cutlass. He received a cartridge box on his waist to hold his ammunition, a bayonet, and the musket itself. These men, as full-time soldiers, would receive uh, a high level of military training uh, as compared to civilian militia. There were formal manuals at the time that dictated all the steps that a soldier should take to properly load and fire his piece. We're going to have Private Melius go through those steps for you here. Take care to perform the firing exercise. Join your right hand to your firelock. Recover your arms. Handle cartridge. So the soldier brings the musket down, cradles it in the crook of his left arm. He reaches into his cartridge box and retrieves a cartridge, a tube of paper that has enough gunpowder for one shot already precisely measured and wrapped up with the projectile that he's going to fire. Everything he needs to shoot is in that one convenient little package. Uncap cartridge. He's going to rip the tail of the paper off of the cartridge, exposing the gunpowder charge inside. Prime. A small amount of explosive black powder is poured into the pan of the lock, the firing mechanism of the weapon. Shut pans. A lid is closed over the powder to keep it in place, and the musket is cast about so that the bulk of the gunpowder charge and the bullet can be inserted into the barrel from the muzzle at the top. Load with cartridge. Draw your rammer. Now the ball, which is inside the barrel but currently near the top of the muzzle, needs to be seated on the gunpowder charge at the breech where the gunpowder itself is. Ram down your cartridge. So every firearm is equipped with a rammer that's used to force that bullet down the length of the barrel. Return your rammer. The rammer is necessary every time you want to discharge your weapon properly, so the drill has the soldiers putting it back in its storage pipes beneath. At this point, Private Melius is ready to fire a shot. 
a well-trained soldier, someone who practiced and drilled several hours a day, as the provincials at Fort Dobbs likely would have uh, during their years of service, should be able to load and fire at least one aimed shot roughly every 15 to 20 seconds. You can imagine a company of 50 soldiers putting three to four rounds a minute down range would have quite a bit of destructive firepower to bring on the enemy. To discharge the weapon, when the soldier presents or aims and pulls the trigger, a sharpened piece of flint stone is going to strike a steel surface on the lock. That surface will create sparks. Uh, the flint will actually shave red hot sparks of iron off of the steel. Those sparks fall into the tray of gunpowder. That explodes. Some of the fire shoots into the barrel where the main gunpowder charge explodes and the gases from that explosion propel the bullet down range at a high rate of speed. Cock your firelock. Present. Fire. Prime and load. Now during the attack on Fort Dobbs, uh, the soldiers having discharged their first round at a par the party of Cherokee that were charging them uh, faced a very serious situation. Uh, by some accounts, more Cherokee started to spread behind the party of men that were outside of the fort, trying to cut them off from the building itself. Uh, we don't know all the details, but it's likely these men would have had to reload very quickly, maybe even using hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons uh, like their bayonets to fight their way through the second party of Cherokee and regain the safety of the fort. Cock your firelock. Present. Fire. So that's very briefly how the musket works. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our virtual commemoration. Stay tuned on our Facebook page as we share more videos throughout the day.